Hey guys, I'm Sarah Lynn Ward, Certified Personal Trainer and Pilates Instructor, and I'm also the Senior Fitness Editor at Healthline. Today, we're going to take a look at the 12-3-30 workout, which was developed by YouTuber Lauren Giraldo. We're also going to look at two other YouTubers who've tried this workout, and I'll give you my opinion as well as some pros and cons for this workout trend so you can give it a shot yourself. I used to weigh 30 more pounds than I do right now. I've been able to keep the weight off for about two years now, and I'm gonna teach you how I did it. So here's me before, I don't diet, I don't calorie count. Okay, one quick caveat. What we eat is just as important and maybe even more important than what we do movement-wise. Okay, how did I do this? Literally, all you need is a treadmill. You put it on an incline of 12, a speed of three, and for 30 minutes, as many times as you can a week, I do it about five. Okay. So this is the gist of the 12-3-30. An incline of 12, which is pretty steep, a speed of three, which is three miles an hour, and 30 minutes at a time. Now, this in and of itself is actually a great way to work out. I really think that this is probably one of the better fitness trends in the sense that it's very beginner friendly. You're just walking. All you need is a treadmill. For people who have intimidation when they go to the gym, this is a great way to get started. 12-3-30, I used to be so intimidated by the gym and it wasn't motivating, but now I go, I do this one thing and I can feel good about myself. Plus I feel like I look snatched and this is like all I do. And I look forward to it, it's my me time, so period. Okay, what I really like about Lauren is that she's so candid with the fact that she was intimidated to go to the gym before this. And as a trainer, I can tell you way more people are intimidated than what you would think when you go into the gym. I think this is a really great way to get started. If you're someone who is nervous about working out in front of other people, this is a great way to start. The other thing that I'll say is that I think it's great that she found an exercise that she loves. Because really, when all is said and done, the best exercise for you is the exercise that you will keep doing. Okay, let's take a look at Devin Nicole. She's a YouTuber who tried the 12-3-30 for a period of 30 days, I believe. Um, and let's see what she thought and what her results were. I hold a lot of weight in my midsection and I'm looking to see that go down a bit. I really don't think I knew what was in store for this challenge, but here goes nothing. If you think this is gonna be super easy, the first day you're in for a rude awakening. I was dying. Look at myself. I'm just like holding on to the edges, standing on the side. It was rough. Okay, this is a really important point to note. So in the beginning of any new workout, it's going to be challenging. Hopefully, right? You want to be challenged with your workouts. Now she mentions that she was holding on the first day and that she really felt like she needed to in order to do that kind of steep incline. And this is a really important point because you will change your results if you're holding on during this workout. In part because you're not pumping your arms, so the calorie burn will be a little bit different, but also your body doesn't have to work as hard from a muscular standpoint to keep you upright because you're holding on to the treadmill so you will see less calorie burn if you're holding on that said this is a very steep incline to begin with so I think there's nothing wrong with beginning this from a lower incline and gradually working your way up that was hard on day two I was really focused on not holding on to the rails it makes it so much easier when you hold on so I really wanted to not I'd say before the first week was even complete, it started to get very repetitive and obviously you're doing the same thing every time, but it was just kind of boring. Yeah, if you're doing the same thing every day, it can get really boring. And that's what Devin is saying, that she saw that even on the second, third day, she was getting a little bit bored and feeling like she wanted to check out of the workout. Now, that's not to say you shouldn't repeat your workouts because you do get better with practice, just like everything else. However, again, going back to that five days, seven days a week idea, it's probably not a great idea to do the same thing every day just for the sake of getting bored. And if you're getting bored, you're not gonna wanna continue. You're gonna lose your motivation and you probably won't wanna get up on day eight to do the same workout again. First week is done. I'm so glad it's done. I'm literally dripping in sweat. I didn't think that I would sweat that much in this challenge, but I have been sweating so much and I don't know, it just feels good to get up and get moving before breakfast. That's my main October goal is to get in some movement before breakfast and I've done just that. But yeah, see you next week. By the time week two rolled around, I was able to do it a lot more comfortably and I always made sure that I stretched after the workout. It seemed to make it easier the next day. This is a really important point and I'm so glad that Devin brought this up. 
Devin said that she felt like the workout was easier the next day if she stretched after the workout the day before. This is really important for something like this where your body is doing the same repetitive motion over and over again. Let's take another look at what Devin had to say later on in the 30 days. People always say you'll never regret working out. And I honestly feel like this workout was one that I didn't necessarily regret, but I wish I did something else. Like I wish I did something else in the 30 minutes that I was walking on the treadmill, if that makes sense. Okay, this is a really interesting point. So if you're bored during your workouts, or you're on the treadmill all the time and you check out, you're gonna be looking for other things to keep your mind occupied. Now, for some people who maybe work from home and have a treadmill desk or need to get up and fit movement into their day, that's not a bad thing. Multitasking isn't always a bad thing. But I just would caution you to think about how you're moving your body when your brain is checked out. Because sometimes that's when injury happens. And if you're setting yourself up by doing the same workout every single day, that's pretty taxing for a certain muscle group in the body and you're totally checked out mentally, you really could risk an injury. There were a lot of times when really all I had were about 30 to 45 minutes to get in a workout and 30 minutes was taken up by walking on the treadmill. It left me frustrated a lot of days, especially towards the end there. I just wasn't seeing anything change or any improvements on my endurance. There was no way to really test that. Like once you can make it through the entire 30 minutes without stopping, there's nowhere you can go to from there. There's nowhere up you can go. This is a really great point too that I'm glad Devin brought up. When you're doing the same thing over and over again, your body adapts. That's why when you're lifting weights, for instance, you have to continue to go up in either reps or volume or load so that you're continuing to see gains. If you do the same thing all the time, your body gets used to it and it plateaus. So she's saying she didn't see a lot of results at the end of this challenge and it doesn't surprise me because if you're only doing one thing for the entire month, you're probably not gonna get a lot of results after about two weeks. All right, let's take a look at another YouTuber who tried the 12-3-30. This is Keegan Acton's response. After you get over the first 15 minutes, it becomes so much easier. And I think that's why in my head, like I can keep going the mindset of like, this isn't hard and I keep wanting to go. I look forward to it. It's honestly like my me time. I watch TV shows, I watch YouTube, I respond to your guys' comments, I scroll on TikTok and Instagram. It's honestly just a time where I can just like mindless things, but like be exercising while I do it. Okay, this is a really interesting thought because I think if it comes down to multitasking when you're working out and that's the only way that you can get a workout in that day, I will always advocate for doing a workout while you're multitasking over doing no workout at all. That's fine, but I kind of wonder if you went outside and hiked, would you actually get a better mood boost and more mental health benefits and even more enjoyable me time than if you were on the treadmill five to seven days a week doing the 12-3-30? Because really the 12-3-30 is just walking uphill. And if you're outside in the environment walking uphill, you're actually gonna get the same physical results, but you might actually enjoy it a little bit more and you'll be doing something more productive for your mental health than just scrolling on the phone. I'm not gonna do something in an unsustainable way like working out seven days in a row. For some people that works for me and I'm assuming a lot of other people, I don't have time every single day of the week to work out. Sometimes I like to take rest days. Okay, I love that she said this. Keegan's original plan was to do the 12 3 30 for seven days of the week, but she actually ended up changing her plan and took two rest days in there instead. And let's be honest, it's really hard for anyone to work out seven days a week. And I think when we set ourselves up with that kind of expectation, we're kind of setting ourselves up to be disappointed or to not reach our goal. And that can actually do worse things for your mood and your motivation than if you already build in some rest days into your routine. Plus, rest days are really important, especially when you're taxing one single muscle group for a long period of time. So I would really encourage anyone who does this or tries the 12-3-30 to build in some rest days so that you're not just doing it every single day. I didn't want to show you guys in an unsustainable way and then expect you guys to replicate it in a more sustainable way and then you guys don't get the same results. I ended up doing this with two rest days. That's honestly how I work out whether or not I'm doing a challenge. So I did show you guys it in a sustainable way, but I am sorry it's not seven days straight. I also did not take before and after photos for the week. I meant to and then I just like completely forgot, but I did take before and after photos for the month. Keegan did this for a week and she actually did it for nine days with two rest days. So seven days of the training program with two rest days in between. And she was going to 
to take before and after photos, but then didn't. And I think this is a really important kind of reality check for every one of us. What you do in one week time, it's not going to reflect what you could do over a month. Your body doesn't make massive change in a week. I don't think it's realistic for us to think that way. And in fact, weight in and of itself, especially for women, will fluctuate very often different weeks of the month just based on where you are in your cycle. So if you're doing this on week one of your cycle, for instance, versus week three, you're going to see very different results on the scale. So I want to caution everyone to think about the long-term exercise goal and think about our results over time not just over one week. One other thing that's really important to note is that muscle weighs more than fat. So if you're standing on a scale and you're only gauging your progress based on the number on the scale, it's kind of deceiving. Because if you're doing a workout, which is very muscle intensive, and I would actually consider 12, 3, 30 to be pretty heavy duty muscle work for your glutes and your hamstrings and your legs in general, because you're walking uphill, that's gonna build a lot of muscle in your body. And so even if you lose a pound of fat, but you gain some muscle, you might not see the change very much on the scale. So keep that in mind when you're weighing yourself. Weight is only one piece of the weight loss picture. I noticed the change first in my face. This is an example of results after two months. She sent me these pictures and told me it was okay for me to use them. This workout definitely requires some time to get used to it. So I would recommend either breaking it up into two halves. So 12 incline, three speed for 15 minutes, taking a five to 10 minute break and then doing the second half or just working your way up to that 12% incline. If your treadmill only inclines to 10, just do 10 incline. It's not that big of a deal. The 12, 330 trademark <laughs> is mine. Big sway. So. Let's talk about these results. I think this is great that people are seeing results with this workout. I will say, I think it's very important to add in some strength training to this routine because this is not gonna give you any kind of upper body strength and this is not going to give you the metabolic change that you might wanna see. What I mean by that is when you add more muscle onto your body, your body burns more calories at rest. So if you are only doing cardio all the time and not doing any kind of muscle building activity, you're not gonna see the long-term results that you might anticipate if you added strength training into your routine. That said, these results are impressive. And I think what's important to note about the 12-330 is that you're really working out in a low intensity, kind of a zone two training, if you will. Zone two training is all about working out at about 60% to 70% of your maximum heart rate. So in other words, if you're on the treadmill, you should still be able to have a conversation. You shouldn't be breathless. You should be working out at this kind of low end of your cardio threshold. And in that low end, your body uses fat for energy. So it doesn't surprise me actually that you're seeing these kind of results because this is really a fat burning workout. And that's what these people are seeing is the loss of fat. What they're not seeing is the gain of muscle. So that's where you need to add in a little bit more to make this more balanced. Okay, so here's how she used to do cardio. She's sprinting. That. Okay, and now how she does cardio walking. I actually really like the simplicity of this video because she says, or she shows, that she used to do high intensity cardio to burn calories and reduce stress. There is a place for that for sure. If you feel like you need to go out for a run and get your stress under control, I highly encourage you to do that. That said, when you switch to something like the 12330, which is more low intensity, you're actually gonna be burning more fat than you would if you're working out at a high intensity. And here's why. The way the body uses energy when you're asking it to perform a movement, it depends on how hard that movement is. If you're working out at a high intensity, your body's gonna rely on your glucose stores, which come from carbs. So your body's using quick energy to make that happen. If you're on the treadmill doing something like 12, 3, 30, which is low intensity, but over a longer duration, your body doesn't have to go to those carb stores. Instead, it's relying on fat stores to make energy for your movement. Okay, so let's recap everything about the 12, 3, 30 that we've learned. The 12, 3, 30 is a great fat burning workout. It's low intensity, it's nice, 
nice and beginner friendly. All you need is a treadmill. You're walking uphill. That said, I don't think you should ever believe that any one workout is the be all end all to your fitness routine or your weight loss goals for that matter. It's important to include strength training so that you're building some muscle and that you can keep those weight loss results up over time because strength training is what increases your metabolism. The other thing that you want to be cautious about is how often you do this during the week because it's really easy to overtrain. If you're not doing any rest days and you're doing the same activity every single day, that's very taxing on the body. So think about adding in some rest days, maybe gradually increasing the incline so that you're starting a little lower and progressively adding more. The other thing I would mention is that if you get off the treadmill and go outside, hiking on average burns anywhere from 300 to 900 calories per hour, depending on how fast you're going, if you're carrying anything like a child in a backpack or just a backpack by itself, or how steep the incline is. So you can get the same results from doing this outside in, in nature and maybe even have better energy afterwards and get some fresh air besides just being stuck in a gym the whole time doing it, which will lead to some boredom and maybe you'll check out and won't want to do it again the next day. All in all, I think the 12 is worth a shot, but let's make it part of a balanced workout routine. If you want more fit tips from Healthline, subscribe to our channel, hit like, and follow along. We'll see you next time.